butternut squash and kale pasta. I'm gonna put the pasta in to boil and I'm using bucatini, but you can use any pasta you want and that really is the case with every pasta dish I make. Just walk into your pantry or open your pantry door, look at the pasta possibilities. You can even put a blindfold on and just pick one. That's how versatile this recipe is. So I just added some pancetta to a skillet with olive oil and butter. And the reason this is a PDQ recipe is I'm using butternut squash that was already prepped. And I got this in the produce section of the supermarket, which is a revelation because if anyone has ever cooked with a butternut squash and prepped it from scratch, you know how long it takes. <laughs> it's a, it can be a bit of a pain. So I'm adding some chopped red onion, so pancetta, butternut squash, red onion, olive oil, butter. Look how delicious this looks already. So now I just gotta let this cook for about eight minutes. The butternut squash is starting to soften and get little brown edges and that pancetta is getting sort of crispy. I love pancetta, which is basically bacon. An Italian bacon. So it has delicious flavor. It's not quite as like strong and smoky and bacony as the bacon we know. So it's great for a pasta dish like this. Okay, moving on to the next stage of the pasta sauce. I'm gonna add some garlic and fresh thyme and sun-dried tomatoes. I love this sauce because it's not heavy, but it does have a lot of wonderful, luscious ingredients. Look at that, how yummy. So now the next little stage of ingredients, bagged kale. This has already been torn, washed, loved on, hugged, <laughs> so it's ready to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add Parmesan cheese on top of the kale. I'm gonna save a little bit for the top, for the garnish, as we like to say in the drum and ranch kitchen. Okay, so Paigey, as you can see, the kale is kind of starting to wilt a little bit. But what I love about kale is it doesn't really wilt very fast. Like if you use spinach, you just have basically a couple minutes before it really wilts. So the pasta goes in. Oh, I forgot to add wine. Yeah, I was wondering. I'm just gonna add it now because there's no way I'm gonna let this go. Listen. Ooh. It's the sound of sin and deliciousness right there. And then I'm gonna add pasta water. Usually you would add the wine after you add the kale and Parmesan. So it's okay to add it a little bit late. Better late than never, right guys? That's right. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna turn the heat down and start stirring this together. And you still wanna cook it a little bit so that wine and pasta water kind of starts to thicken. And look, oh my word. So the last thing I'm gonna add, I think it's the last thing, you never know with me. I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon just to brighten things up. Mm. To me, there's just nothing about this dish that isn't perfect. I would make this for myself on a Monday night, a Tuesday afternoon, a Saturday morning. <laughs> you didn't laugh enough. Okay, and then some black pepper. So then I've got some toasted pine nuts and I'm gonna sprinkle them over. And all I did was just put pine nuts in a dry skillet over kind of medium heat and just shook the skillet around for a couple, about five minutes and it kind of makes them light and golden. And <laughs> there we go. This is where I start to lose track. Parmesan cheese and torn basil. Look. Hello, hello, hello. You wanna make me happy? Just make me this any day of the week.